Hey guys, welcome to another dog vlog. In today's video, we are going to talk about, oh yeah, that's a, that's a big yawn, buddy. In today's video, we're going to talk about when you can start considering leaving your dog outside of their crate and start letting them roam free either in your home or apartment or in a bedroom. Plus, I have a special product review, hint, hint, coming at the end of the video to help with this transition. So let's jump into this video, right? Meow. Honestly, how stinking cute is this nugget? Hi, Finnegan, are you gonna help with the video today? Yeah, oh, is that a kissy? Is that a kissy? And then what about my chocolate? My senior boy, Bentley. Hi, Benny. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. Mm. Oh my, yeah, mm. right, in, right in the mouth. Hey guys, so let's talk about crate training and not my typical topic, which is, you know, how do you crate train? And of course I have tons of videos on that, but the transition to go from using a crate to not using a crate is actually very possible, but there's some really important things that you have to consider. But before we jump into that, let me give you a few quick tips on crate training in general, because I know many of you may be going through that right now. And the first tip is that my primary tip is if you watched any of my crate training videos is you need to make the crate Disneyland. And the way that you do that is you interact with your new dog or puppy in and around the crate several times a day with nothing but positive association. For So a few quick examples are feeding them their meals in their crate, even with the door open, or if they still don't wanna go inside the crate, put their bowl right outside of the crate and feed them in there. Or even better, hand feed them using their food as a reward during mealtime and have them go in and out of the crate. Take the crate training process slowly in the very, very beginning, I always recommend to have your puppy sleep in the crate near you in your bedroom, and then you can slowly progress over time to have the crate in another bedroom if you don't want the crate in your room. Now, let's say your dog loves the crate and you're ready and anxious to give them more freedom and let them roam the house or roam your room. There are some really important things to consider for this. The number one being everything I share here is just what I have done for my dogs and my foster dogs. The over 55 do foster dogs that I have helped rescue and, and find new homes for and trained. And you have to be your dog's best advocate and do what's best for you, your family, and mo ultimately what's safest for your dog. But what I did with both of my boys is step one is get them to love their crate and be really comfortable with it. And step two is I did not transition them to go outside of their crate and have more freedom until I felt confident that they were not going to accidentally or purposefully self-harm. While both of my dogs are crate trained, again, he's almost three and he's almost 11, they do not currently use crates on a daily basis. I still pull the crate out, have them go in it to stay used to it because I believe, I know a lot of people may think that a crate is cruel and if used incorrectly, absolutely, it can be a horrible, horrible tool. That said, I like my dogs to still be comfortable with using a crate because there may, knock on wood, be an unfortunate time in their life that they have to be in a crate because of medical need. Let's say your dog gets hurt or gets sick and they need to stay at the vet's office overnight. What do you think they're gonna keep them in? They're gonna keep them in a crate type structure. And if my dog is not used to being in one ever, think of the added stress they're gonna be in. My dogs are not currently using a crate full time, but they did both use crates for the first 12 to 18 months of their life. Honestly, for most dogs, I would recommend to wait to 18 to 24 months old before even considering transitioning them out away from using a crate full time. And so the way that I trained them to not be in their crate and to have more freedom was almost the exact same way that I trained them to be comfortable in their crate, only in reverse, slowly over time, and supervised. And the only way that I could supervise them safely was using a camera. And that's gonna give me a segue into this new product I wanna talk about. And then I'm gonna go into more tips on how and when to transition them. But guys, I am obsessed. You know that I am a big, big advocate of pet cube camera. Uh, I use this to train my dogs, my foster dogs. Actually, I don't think you guys saw that there. And they just launched a brand new camera. This is not a treat dispensing camera like their other ones or a laser toy. This is literally just like a plain nanny cam for your dog. And no, this video is not sponsored. They sent this to me to try out, which I'm really excited because we're getting ready to go on a big trip. Guys, a huge adventure is coming. I'm going to vlog the entire thing. We are moving in a big way. Big things are coming and this is going to be 
a lifesaver. And this is gonna be a lifesaver for anybody out there who's looking to train their dog to not be in a crate full time, plus many, many other things. And I wanna talk to you a little bit about how this works. So basically it's just a camera here. Let me unplug it here uh, because that cord does not go long enough, but it's a light weight, easy to use and affordable camera. It literally took me one minute to set up. I love the packaging. I love the design of this camera because it is so small. For size comparison, I have the iPhone 11 Pro. Oh, look, there's Finn. And so you can see how small this camera is. And I love that because it's extremely portable, so you could move it from room to room. It is 1080p HD Wi-Fi, and it is also widescreen view. It's also gonna have night vision mode, 8X digital zoom, and a two-way audio with noise-canceling microphone and a high-quality speaker. So I really love all of the features to be able to check on my dogs and make sure that they're staying safe. That's my biggest thing. The interesting thing about this one is it also has a vet chat built in and you can actually connect with a vet, a vet right away. So that's actually kind of cool and convenient with everything, considering everything going on in the world. With my uh, Pet Cube cameras, I do have their subscription service, so I can go back and rewind and actually watch what happened in the past. I'm not watching the camera live. It does have pet detection, so it gives you smart notifications triggered by sound and motion, and that way it'll tell me if the pet is being active. And finally, you can mount this, so it comes with the ability to mount. So here is the app. You can see it gives me a little preview of what literally just happened live. That's you guys filming with me. So I'm gonna click the play button and it's gonna be getting the quality. I like to turn it on its side, and there we are. Oh, Bentley! <laughs> He's like, what is that, what is that? <laughs> and you guys can see that's the, that's the camera. Okay, so I set the camera down. Hi, Finn. Finn, can you say hi to the camera? Can you guys see him? There he is right there. You can get kind of the perspective. That's where the camera is. And oh my gosh, this quality is so good. And I think what I really love about it is how real time it is. Like I'm literally moving my hand. You guys can see it on this camera and then also see it on there. I can also talk to the dogs. So you can pe press this microphone here. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. And then you can take pictures and, oh, there's Finn. <laughs> Hi, buddy, do you like it? He loves it. And there's my cat Haven. And again, this video is not sponsored. Oh, there's my cat. Uh, but they did send the camera, like I said before. And when they sent it, I was like, okay, cool. Thank you so much for sending this to me. But I don't want to be the only one to get one of these for free. I want one of you guys to be able to get one. So there's description details in the description below on a giveaway I'm doing with this camera. Haven, are you excited? Yeah. It helps me keep an eye on you as well, huh? Yeah, hi baby girl. So obviously I'm obsessed with this product mostly for the fact that it's easy to use, uh, really easy to set up, and the safety aspect of it, the ability to check on my animals no matter where I am is priceless and invaluable. It's such a great tool, especially if you're going to work during the day or you leave them alone. It's so, so, so incredibly important. I'll never forget the time that I was checking on Bentley when I didn't, we didn't even have Finn at that point. And he, I saw he was vomiting and he was sick and I rushed home. I ended up getting a speeding ticket. Comment below if you want a story time on that. And I was able, and he was, he ended up being fine. It was, he had an upset stomach from something I'd fed him the night before, but it was a good way for me to see, oh my gosh, he needs me. And I could run home and take care of him. And I just, to me, having the ability to do that is priceless. But let's talk about giving your dog freedom outside of the crate. So for me, and what I did with my boys was step one is I chose a room that I was gonna give them freedom in. I wasn't gonna start with giving them freedom of the whole house. And I put their crate in that room. For, at the time, it was a guest room. All we had in there was a bed and a dresser. And so I made sure that they were used to being in the crate in that room for about a month. So they got really comfortable with that being the place that they go whenever I'm not home. Uh, step one was obviously dog proof proofing, puppy proofing the room, make sure there's no socks or loose articles left out to the best of my ability. And of course I set up a camera so I could see all angles of the room. Again, I like this because it's a wide angle view. So it's really easy to find a spot to do that. Then I just slowly gave them free time. So I left the crate in there, but I left the door open and I went outside of the room, shut the door, kept an eye on them, on them uh, with the camera. And I did that for about 10 minutes. And then I slowly progressed upwards of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, always checking in frequently to make sure they're not 
getting into anything. Some dogs are gonna transition just fine. Others may try to paw at the door and we don't want to allow that behavior. So you could use like a playpen gate or a baby gate to kind of protect the door if you wanna make sure that they don't uh, claw at it. I have seen things that you can put on a door it's like plastic that you use like a command strip to attach the door so if they claw at it, it doesn't uh, leave a mark. Obviously, you want to prevent that from happening by getting them used to being alone and away from you. If you guys want separation video tips or door crate training tips, you can click the video right up here. I have tons of playlists down below. But if you've given them plenty of time to adjust to being in that room inside of their crate without them crying and freaking out, then once you open the door, what I found with both of my boys at least, they did just fine. It really was a really easy transition. I just did it again slowly over time. And I do recommend for most dogs that you don't even start considering this until they're about 18 to 24 months old or even older. And some dogs do best just being in a crate. And if you've done the crate training right, you will find that most dogs will actually stay in the crate when you leave the door, the crate door open and you leave the room and shut the door. A lot of times dogs are gonna go back in that crate and just lay in there because they're comfortable with it. Now, you may be wondering, okay, great. So when can I let them have free roam of the house? This is something I can't answer for you because it's not something I allow my boys to do. It may be something I consider in the future, but honestly, you know, I don't have a lot of chemicals or pills in my home, but there's just too many things. A cord, you know, what if the front door doesn't get shut? There's too many things in my opinion in most homes that a dog could get into let's say something spooks them let's say a neighbor plays loud music or there's a car that backfires it sounds like a firework and it triggers them and they want to start chewing on something the more free roam they have the more likely they could get into something now don't take my paranoia and my anxiety about making sure my dogs are perfect at all times to heart too much that's just who i am you do what's best for your dog and be your dog's best advocate i just to me, I'm fine with leaving them in. So right now, what I do in this apartment, Finn stays alone in uh, our den, which is like our guest room. When I'm not home and he has full uh, roam of that room, and Bentley stays in the master bedroom alone. And so I have a camera in each room. You see this? His anxiety is a lot more than Finn's. Oh my gosh. You guys are so cute. Like I'm obsessed. Hi. Hi boys. If you guys have some behavior problems that you wanna fix with your dogs, click the video linked right here. I show you one thing you can use to help 90 Five, 99% of all problems out there. And if you wanna see what I feed my boys, click the video right here. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. It means so much to me. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.